before we break bread together, all of our traditions tell us to pause and express gratitude. Tonight, those words of thanks will be offered by Rabbi Sam Kay of the Temple, the Reverend Dr. Simon Manwaring of All Saints Episcopal Church, and Ms. Yelena Naim of All Falah Academy. The first time I ever saw Muhammad Ali, he, I was six years old, and he was on the cover of a comic book, getting ready to face off against my hero, Superman. In the story, the two men come together to save the entire planet from an oppressor. They overcome their respective Kryptonian and human cultural differences, and through their incredible gifts and grit, humanity avoids falling prey to annihilation. It wasn't until I was older that I learned that that boxing superhero who helped Superman save the day was actually a real person, one who was still alive and fighting for human dignity. In Judaism, we read one section of the Torah, the Hebrew Bible, every week, rotating through the entirety of the scroll over the course of a single year. And often when I am reading the Torah, I am astonished at how the scripture speaks to an individual moment in my life or a moment in national discourse. This week was no different, as this morning I read the conclusion of the story of Abraham in preparation for what comes next. Abraham breathed his last, dying at a good, ripe age. Old and content he was, and gathered to his kin. His sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the cave of Machpelah. It gives me such hope to read that story this morning, and then to join you all here this evening. That is the culmination of a story where two children who have had difficult relationships both with each other and with their father are yet able to overcome their pain. They're able to gather for moments that matter most, to be family again. They are able to fulfill the most basic and important of commandments, to take care of those who cannot take care of themselves. As their descendants, I am so pleased that not only have we learned from their example, but we have expanded upon it, able to gather in times of joy as well as grief. Tonight, as we pay tribute to a hero, may we continue to live up to the ancestors that we share, to see dignity and family bonds in each other, to recognize the hand of the divine in our lives. Sim shalom tova uvracha, chen chesed varacha mim, aleinu ve'akol Yisrael ve'akol Yishvei Tebel, v'imru amen, Place peace and goodness and blessing, grace, kindness, and compassion upon us all, upon the children of Israel, upon the, all those who inhabit this earth. And together we say, Amen. Good evening. Somebody was telling me in the reception that the best invocation is the shortest. So I've got a 20-minute section here. I belong to a tradition that is part of a bigger family, as do we all. And my tradition, the Christian tradition, in some cases hasn't got the best uh, track record in keeping the main thing, the main thing, which is God made and loves each and every one of us just the same. Mahatma Gandhi once said, I like your Christ, I do not like your Christians. So I want you to know as a leader of one of the Christian communities in this city of Atlanta, where we're still too busy to hate, that we're working on that one. We're working hard to be people who are God's hands and feet in the world, so that, not so that people might like us more, but that we might love more deeply. A member of my tradition, C.F. Andrews, had the opportunity to get to know Mahatma Gandhi during his years in India. And was, each of them became an important influence in the other's life. And there's a beautiful exchange that speaks to me of what it means for us to gather here as brothers and sisters, as siblings, one to another. C.F. Andrews and Mahatma Gandhi met and they said to one another, tell me your beautiful names of God and I will tell you mine. 
That is the reason why I love to gather here in this community, in this city, and why the work of ISB is so important to the life that we share together, that through one another's lives we may get to hear the beautiful names of God. And so I offer this prayer from my tradition, but for the whole human family. O oh God, you made us in your own image and call us to lives marked by love that honor and respect the dignity of every human being. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. For your love's sake we pray. Amen. Salaamu Alaikum, greetings of peace to all of our honored guests. I'm Yelena Naim, and I've enjoyed working with the Islamic Speakers Bureau of, its, of Atlanta since its founding in 2001. My husband Rashid and I have lived in Atlanta for 25 years, where we raised our four children. I'm the principal of a faith-based school, a pre-K through high school Islamic school located in Gwinnett County, Al Falah Academy. I'm humbled and honored to share the stage with Rabbi Sam and Reverend Simon. Thank you all for your kind words and your moving prayers. I join all the voices in this room to extend my deepest condolences to Rabbi Sam on the recent loss of 11 beautiful souls due simply to their identification with the Jewish community of faith. And I welcome everybody again, this amazingly diverse and accomplished group of uh, people who have joined together to show that the pluralism of Atlanta and the city that, that will not hate and uh, the, will, will definitely be something that breaks the polarization that seems to be enveloping us. To all of our guests in this gathering, whatever faith or set of principles you identify with, our partnership, our collaboration, our work together is possible because we know we unite our timeless common values of equity and justice. The moral foundation of our faith communities, as well as our civic community in the United States, is based on these values. Muslims ground their understanding of equity and justice in the teachings of the Quran, the Holy Book of Islam. I'd like to share a small but deep sampling of verses that exemplify this central tenet of Islam, God's command to be just and to be equitable. Behold, God enjoins justice, the doing of good, and generosity towards fellow men, and forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. He exhorts you repeatedly, so you might hear with all this in mind. This is from Surah An-Nahl, chapter 16, verse 90. Another verse, O oh, you who have attained faith, be ever steadfast in your devotion to God, bear witness to the truth in all equity, and never let hatred of anyone lead you into the sin of deviating from justice. Be just. This is closest to being God conscious. A verse from Al-Maida, Surah 5, Chapter 5, verse 8. Finally, O oh, you who have attained faith, be ever steadfast in upholding equity, bearing witness to the truth for the sake of God, even though it be against your own selves and parents and kinfolk. Whether the person concerned be rich or poor, God's claim takes precedence over either of them. Do not then follow your own desires lest you swerve from justice. For if you distort the truth, behold, God is indeed aware of all you do. From Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 135. 
To end, I'd like to share the words of a prayer our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, in a supplication that is often repeated in a Muslim's daily prayers. O oh God, guide me along with those whom you have guided. Pardon me along with those whom you have pardoned. Be an ally to me along with those with whom you are allied. And bless me for that which you have bestowed. Protect me from the evil you have decreed, for verily you decree and none can decree over you. For sure, the one whom you show allegiance to is never abased. The one whom you take as an enemy is never honored and mighty. O oh, our Lord, blessed and exalted are you. Thank you so much for your attention and peace upon all of you.